Hey guys. Hello. Welcome to the show. Happy Wednesday. Yes, we're happy, yes. Yes, we're very happy. It's also Wednesday. It's also Wednesday. <laughs> it's, a, it's a happy, snappy Wednesday. All right. <laughs> it's snappy and it's going to be nice outside. It's beautiful already. And we're in here. Yeah, that's how it works. This weekend was crap. And then we come back to work and spend all of our days inside. And then outside is beautiful. <laughs> Somebody else notice how that works? A little bit of a, a shame. All right. Well, last week we finished up the pommel saddlebags. I remember that word, finally, for the first yes. time in my whole life. No. Yes, we finished up the pommel saddlebags. Didn't we do the the round bottom? Yeah, we did those first. Oh, we did those first. Yeah. I told you to I move said, that. Okay. <laughs> All right, so this week we are continuing with saddlebags, um, but we are going to do a soft bodied instead of a veg tan. Yeah, this is fairly soft bodied. Okay. Yeah. And fairly this soft is bodied. a 10 by 12 square bottom double billet saddlebag. All right, everybody, write that down. <laughs> 10 by 12 square bottom double billet saddlebag. And we, we uh, did a pleated. Uh, gusset on the last one. I'm going to try it on this one, but I don't think it'll work very well on a square bottom bag. But uh, if it doesn't, we haven't lost it. Okay, because it'll just unpleat. Yeah, yeah it'll just unpleat and wad up like they usually do. <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to give it a shot. So, what what leather are you using? Uh, this came off our bargain table. Just it a was, miscellaneous oil a, tan? I think it was a $50 side. It was a 15 square foot piece, and okay. I used basically all of it. I had this left and a, and a few little small scraps. All right, so 15 square feet will cut you this size it's, saddlebag. It's 10 by 12 10 by square 12. bottom double billet saddlebag. And this is, again, for the back of the saddle? Yes, for okay. the back, yes. So this is a large yes, version. this is a large saddlebag. Okay. It's about as large as I would ever Put on. suggest. <laughs> All right, and how wide is the gusset going to be? The gus is about three inches, maybe okay. three and a quarter. I forget what I cut it. So maybe pretty similar to what we've been doing. Yeah. It's three and a half inch gusset. Three and a half inch gusset, and it'll be about a three inch once we're done sewing it up. Yeah. That's right. Okay. All right. Well, I think Denny has parts to cut. It's going to be. I just have a bunch of parts rough cut. So today I'm going to just. Put I'll a keep cutting. Final cut. I love it. We've, rough, right. we've rough cut, and now we've got a final cut. I'm just going to mark everything as I go. Howdy, Ron. We didn't bring our howdy hats today. You know, I do I do appreciate the hat in this specific setting because it keeps the really, like, sometimes by the end of this hour, um, my eyes are quite tired from the really bright lights in front of me. And the hat is nice because then my eyes are shielded from the really bright lights. That's wonderful. I'll just put my sunglasses on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, as I as I scribe this pattern, I'm marking all the holes because the instructions say cut the pattern. Am I moving this table? Oh yeah, the wheels are locked in. But anyway, the the instructions say cut the pattern. And punch all holes in the slots as per pattern. Oh, sweet. <laughs> <laughs> this is my new look. Hey, guys. Punch. Oh. Oh, right. You're trying to follow your instructions. I'm trying to, yes. Didn't we work on that last week, too? We worked on it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I rode the short bus to school. You have to remember that. How, how are the patterns coming with the boys? I haven't. Uh, been updated. Okay. But you gave him some stuff. Oh, I gave him a lot of stuff. You gave him all the stuff. Look at Denny go with his head knife. We should just do a Denny head, head knife video there's only every one week. There's microphone for everybody, so there's not a Denny mic and a Liz mic. It's just one mic, so Denny, if you can speak up so they can hear you, if they're complaining, they can't hear you. Oh. So if you could yell for us, that'd work out. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, today is basically just a Denny head knife, round knife, whatever you want to call it. Business. Yeah, we should just take all the, it could just be, I'll have to think of a fun name for Denny cutting with a round knife. 
And this is a really kind of a rustic looking piece of leather. But I think it'll make great saddlebags because what do you do with them? Just put stuff in them. Yeah. What did you carry when you saddled? I carried a small set of saddlebags when I, like, if I was riding in the back country or something. But yeah. As then you're talking quiet again. <laughs> okay. If I just if I just talk like this. Oh, there you, Liz. Can you turn your volume down? Yeah, I'll just talk like this, and then we'll sound the same. Guys, I'm just loud. That's what this is. Denny is normal, and I'm not. <laughs> you're not normal. <laughs> I think you're. Well, none of us are really normal. <laughs> oh, Dean wants to see us drop that knife. Drop it. I will here he, in a minute. He, he brought a strop in so we can do that. He was prepared because he has a lot of cutting to do. So he was he's prepared to, to repolish yeah. in the middle. Yeah, whenever you're cutting and your knife starts to drag and catch, it's time to strop it up. Robert does says thank you for talking louder. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> and also, ironically, his name is Silent Robert. Um I'm just going to say... Is, that is ironic. <laughs> That's pretty ironic. <laughs> oh, look how, look how tiny and cute we are up there in the corner. That's okay. <laughs> We're here for Denny's knife scales anyways. Get cut. Alright, this is too difficult to also read. Oh, that's... Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> My wife has it. The eye doctor told her she had eye grains. They're like migraines of your eye. Interesting. Yeah. Eye grains. And she'd never heard of it. And he said, yes, they're more common than you would think. But her eye, when she gets out in the sun, yeah, her eyes start to water. Well, she has light-colored eyes too, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's something Chris has always made fun of me because I always wear sunglasses when I'm out. And I just can't. Like, I can't see. But he has brown eyes. And so apparently there's been some research that people with lighter colored eyes are more sensitive to the sun than people with darker colored eyes. And so he's always just like, Liz, it's fine. Just squint. It's not a big deal. And I'm just like, no, but it hurts. <laughs> well, I know before I had my cataract surgery, the sun didn't bother me. Of course, I couldn't see. So. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing really bothered me. <laughs> Nothing bothered me. <laughs> but after I had that surgery, boy, I... I started to really notice it. I wear sunglasses all the time outside. Did anyone hear that? Does anybody know how often Denny wears sunglasses? <laughs> okay. That's cut. Cass now says, I'm... as somebody that owns multiple horses, he really feels like he should have some saddlebags, but they, they don't. And <laughs> he's like, I should get on this. Okay, now this, since uh, this is a, a soft bag... I'm going to reinforce this top part, the part that goes across the saddle, simply because I just want to kind of beef it up some. Okay. So I've cut these parts here. Ooh, am I going to glue, or is this loose? Uh, yes, you are going to glue. I'm going to glue. Let me get. Let me move. Let me move my hydro dipping. Hello. Hello. And get some paper. Powder Cat uses blue light blocking glasses. Mm -hmm. I have mine right here. Yeah, Tony has some. I wore them before the cheese dip video. Oh, right. Because <laughs> you said I needed eye protection. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely shameless. Was there a pattern? Not yet, guys. Not yet on the patterns. Um, our R&D department is working on it. We're kind of... We've got, we've got our cart before our horse here with our videos. Um, Denny's been working. He's had saddlebag patterns for a really long time. And, and uh, we, we, needed, we needed something to do. Yes, this is a chrome tan leather. Yeah. Uh, light, light oil. Yes. It has pretty good oil content. Pretty good oil content, so it's probably a oil tan. Now, yeah. I'm going to skive this a little bit. 
And I'm going to use this handy dandy safety skiver. All right, guys, this is Denny's special. This is his special skiver. He cut the end off and he flipped it around and he JB welded it back on. To make it left handed. To make it left handed because this doesn't come left handed. This is a right handed tool. So unless you want to figure out how to use it right handed, if you are left handed, this, the, this safety skiver, super skiver, safety? Safety, safety skiver. Safety skiver. Um, you got to modify for you southpaws out there in the world. But in retrospect, you probably ought to just learn to use it right handed. <laughs> Well, it's okay. nice to have you, Robert. Also, thanks the, the thanks for saying hi. Is also stropped and polished. Yes, I, I strop and polish this blade. <clears throat> they don't come very well polished, so if you polish them up, they sure cut better. Hopefully, boy, heard that answer about it being chrome tan. I wouldn't say that chap was. It's a chrome tan size. Glue, glue. Glue, glue. Okay. Yeah, yeah, just this part. So you just skived this one edge? Yes, that one edge where it, because it would be blunt if I did. Um, so we skived it because this edge goes here. Yes. And so this makes it to where it'll be just better. Yes, not not as prominent. Okay. Uh, Kaz, for this one, this one would probably be on the rear of the saddle. The last one we did with the pommel bag would have been on the front of the saddle, hanging on the saddle. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Ooh, Shoot. Denny! Denny put some new glue in here. Yes, I did. Just for this. Did you answer this question already? No. What was it? Uh, oh, I see it. Uh, Is this pattern in front of the saddlebag and specifically for a western saddle attached behind the saddle? Yes, that's what I was answering. Yes. And then you started laughing. I didn't know what you were laughing at. Uh, I didn't have glue. Oh. <laughs> that's quite a conundrum. You are stuck, not sticking. Exactly. What do you need? There's a pencil. Now the ones we made last week for were for the front of the saddle. The ones we made the week before that were also for the back of the saddle. Yeah. Yeah, this is just a uh, Basically the same bag, only it's got a square bottom instead of a round bottom, and it's wide enough so I'm, it's going to have two billets instead of just a single. And it's not cooled. No bug eyes this week. Yeah, no bug eyes. Ooh-wee. Justin, I hope your headache is gone. <laughs> then I am sorry. You might need to open the door. <laughs> Okay. I learned about cluster headaches this week. Do you cluster? get cluster headaches? Apparently they're worse than being shot. Jesus. Yeah. That was the description that this lady had of her headaches. And then they just keep, they come in waves. And she's like, when I get them, they last for a few months. It seemed real horrible. Yeah, I mean... Like I'd rather get shot. Yeah, because then that's just a one and done situation. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe two, you know, if you're a bad aim. Yeah. Hey, brown bird. <laughs> oh. Anybody's curious? This is Master's contact cement, I assume. Yes, it is. Good old masters. You put it on both sides. You let it get tacky. And then you put your two sides together. This one, I kind of over trimmed it. Okay. So, glue to this line and not to that. Perfect. Inside line. Okay. Now, I'm going to cut the bag flaps. Did anyone hear that? Cutting bag flaps. I'll just be your echo, you know? Okay. You can say something and then I'll repeat it. Okay, that's good. <laughs> I 
There's a lot of holes and slots in this part. Glued. Very nice. Tony has had boiled peanuts. Hey, you want to? Never mind. Yeah, Down man. south, they call them goobers. Goobers? Yeah. Goobers? I've been called a goober before. <laughs> well, if the shoe fits, you know. <laughs> I almost was like, isn't that what that guy's name on Andy Griffith was? But that yeah. was Gomer. Oh, he had a cousin Gomer goober. Pile. Oh, did he? Yeah, his cousin goober. See? I knew that. My dad is always watching Andy Griffith when I go to visit him in the nursing home. <laughs> makes me makes me smile. Sometimes I'm like, I should look this up and watch this again. Yes. Such a good show. Yep, I was a fan. Okay, now we'll cut the bag front. Or I'll mark. Well, I better cut these before I go any further. I do think, okay, so if we're... I mean, we're not, but we're going to talk about Andy Griffith. What happened to um, the mother? Did she pass away? Did, do they ever say? I, no, not that I remember. Does, do they say, anybody out there, Andy Griffith fans, do they say what happened to, um, oh, for Pete's sake, what's his name? Andy. Yeah, Andy. <laughs> not, not, him, not him. Who's the son? Who's the son? Oh. Uh, Opie. Ron, yeah, Ronnie Opie. Howard. Yeah. Do they ever say what happened to Opie's mom? I don't remember him talking about it, but it was a very proper show, so I'm sure she just died. I'm sure <laughs> there was no divorce involved. It's the proper way. The more you know. <laughs> Death. Uh, Odin, it went fantastic. We'll show you on the, on the after party. Yeah, I, I have them. Um, I brought my panels. I need to mix up some more yellow because I really think the yellow is pretty phenomenal. But um, it went good. I was very excited. I made sure it happened just for you. It was like 9.30 Monday night and I was like, I need to do hydro dipping right now. Because if I don't do one tonight, then I'm not going to know if I need to do bigger ones tomorrow. So I did a little test run and it was it was super exciting. How are you feeling over there, Denny? Okay, I'm just you feeling good? wondering if I'm where I'm supposed to be. Just, yep. If you just stay on this whiteboard, you're good. Every once in a while, I move the whiteboard, though, inadvertently. Listen. It's not on purpose, though. I hope you know that. <laughs> okay, this is the bag front. You got, okay. You got a little whoop de doo in front there. It's it's so much fun, guys. Like I can't. It's a lot of fun to do the paint and then to do the swirling. Like it's a. It doesn't really feel like you're doing leather craft, and you're not. Like you're just painting something that's not leather craft. Oh, but it's, but it's crafting on but, leather. Exactly. It, it allows you to make more cool things. Like, I made a whole bunch of earrings before I went down to Texas to give to people. And they were just so cute. Little, just little hydro-dipped earrings. And I paired up. I had, like, a little layered, like, a pale pink earring and then, like, a pale green one. They were all, I don't know. It was just fun. And. Yep, she died. She is still dead. Oh, so is almost it, everybody still? else on the show. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Uh, okay, since you're in the glue mode. Yes, sir. There's four of those that need to be glued together. $200 for a full skin, 100 bucks for a half a skin. We have four, we have four skins. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> nice. 
not all of them. <laughs> Left out on retail. I was just out there this morning. And then uh, we have another 40 coming. So we have four here, and then we have 40 more on their way. 200 bucks. See, that would have never gone on the Andy Griffith show. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it goes on the live shopping show weekly. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why Facebook doesn't like us, too. Probably. good in here guys it has picked up the pace <laughs> Liz is really feeling it her nap is getting interrupted Denny, I bet nobody is complaining about watching you use a head knife for an hour. No one is. Nobody is. I don't think anybody's ever going to complain about this. <laughs> is Pitney Bowes a unit of USPS or a completely separate company? I think it's a separate company, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's a separate company. They're just, they're probably the largest distributor of postage <laughs> besides the post office. I feel like everybody uses Pitney Bowes. Or maybe Stamps.com is coming in in a good second place. I don't know. It's got to be up there. You know what, though? I had a really good experience with the post office this week. Oh. And so I know that that's probably an abnormal thing to say. But <laughs> I really, I got the knives. Yeah. I, uh... I had a, a couple of knives coming in from a maker that I'm going to make sheaths for. And uh, bless his heart, he didn't put my street number, my house number, on that shipping label. He just put Elizabeth Van Every and my street on there. General delivery. <laughs> just wherever you want to take it. In any case, um, it was delivered Saturday evening at 5 and not to my house. And so poor guy is messaging me and being like, I don't know what to do. I'm not sure. I messed up. It's uh, something. Yep, I got. Anyways, but it was Saturday evening. So there was really nothing that I could do. There's no post office. I mean, they're not open. They're delivering, but there's nobody there to call. And, uh, and then Monday was President's Day, of course. So there was no taking care of it on Monday. But Tuesday, we went down to my little local distribution hub. And they don't do anything there. Like, they only will collect your package if it's already done. They have, like, a window with a one of those doors that swings open on the top and the bottom. And uh, that's it. Like, they will talk to you and take a package, but they don't do anything else. <laughs> and so I show up yesterday, and I'm like, hey, so I was expecting a package, and this is the tracking number. And it says it was delivered, but I sure didn't get it. Anyways, and so the guy went, and he checked his nice little computer. And sure enough... Um, they had just chosen some random address to send my package to that wasn't my address, but it was just on the other side of Campbell. So anyways, so I went, he gave me the address, which was really nice of him. I didn't know if they were going to do that. You know, I didn't know if they were going to be like, oh, we have to send a postman out there to see if they can get it or retrieve it or whatever. In any case, so he gave me the address and I, I go to that house and I didn't get anybody, but I left my card with my phone number and she called me. And she was wondering, she was like, I was about ready to go canvassing. And so I got to go pick up the package. My man, my, my man is very relieved. He was, <laughs> he was quite beside himself. Well, we put quite a bit of time in that. Yeah. So it really went quite smooth and everything's okay. And I got, got the knives back. Knives are safe. This pattern pack will have three 
saddlebag pattern? Uh, at least. Is it's there another a, one? It's also, I've got a, a medicine bag and a, oh, yeah. a cantle bag. Yeah, so that probably, might be on it. probably five. Five pack of saddlebags. Um, Denny, you doubled up that section for just a little bit more firmness. Yes, I just just a little more beef because this is the part that uh, that goes across the back of the saddle. Yeah, and the and the rest of it will have you know this will have a, a, a gusset and a, a front pocket and a a lid that will go with it and this part will just be all by itself so I yeah. just added a little bit to it. You don't have to do that, but I thought I would because I'm. I suppose if you wanted to, you could make that back panel out of something thicker. You could, and then just attach everything else on top of it. But this because it was what five to six ounce? Yeah, or maybe six, seven. I don't know. What what would you say? I don't have to five. guess. I could be accurate. Ball. Five six. Okay. Five six. Yeah. What is so it? So now mean? it's doubled up and it's a good ten ounce. Yeah. yeah. Right. Now then. I'm also, the I feel like that's the back of it, and that also just keeps it. Maybe a little bit protected. Yeah, yeah. While it's up yeah. on the, the back of the, the horse. Exactly, yeah. because everything else, see, is going to have more. Everything else is actually going to be double. Yeah. So. Or what you could have done is you could have done it the other way, and this could have been your inside, and then you could have put everything on the front. I could have. Yeah, and then this would be inside the bag, and it would be all finished on the outside. Good, Good point. You could still do that. No, I couldn't. I've already glued everything. Yeah, but if you just switched oh. them, because I oh yeah, I guess maybe I could. <laughs> or is it going to be too low? Well, is your yeah? It, it would, would okay. It wouldn't look right. Just kidding. You <laughs> could always, if you wanted to, you could make this longer, come down longer into the bag. Right. And then you could do all this on the front, and this would be inside, and then you'd have a completely finished back outfit. Yeah. But whatever you guys want to do. Oh, striker. That's a bummer. Not those sides that we split. <laughs> okay. Luna, I'm so sorry that this is about to happen. Oh, she'll survive. Andy got his gator skin, and he's like, it's too pretty to cut. I know. It'll take you a minute. <laughs> You'll get brave. Just admire it for a while. Say, I remember when this used to be not like this. I brought the wrong slot punch. I'm going to have to go get a different one. Okay. So, Striker, the hair on hide, half, and... Your blue side wasn't in there. They should have been rolled around it. It was a conversation that we had. It was it? Cool. Love it. Did not get in there? Well, he's saying that it didn't. Fantastic. How was the... I'll look on Discord after this is over. Here. I bet I can put some of these straps together while Denny is out running around getting things. He brought, he was like, my basket weighs 50 pounds. I only have all of my tools in it. You want to say hi? Luna says hi.
Plan, 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 plan some more. Learned yesterday the hard way that when slicking the edges for outer part of a gunsling inlay, if you're not careful, it will stretch and no longer fit. Yeah. Yeah, leather stretches. It's a problem. <laughs> yeah, just consider it. <laughs> oh no. Luna, you want a you want a biscuit? Why isn't that dog in school? Because school is expensive and I don't have to pay for school if I bring her here. She was born January of 2020. We got her in March of 2020, about a week before the shutdown happened. <laughs> the old shutdown. The old shutdown. That was a weird time, wasn't it? Sure was. did you do during the old shutdown? Did you guys travel? No. You just stayed at home? Luna, it's yeah, okay. Yeah, we stayed at home. I built a, a chicken yard. <laughs> <laughs> I remember Then he got all cooped up. I remember that was one thing I, I wanted to get done. Hey, come on. You're okay. He's, he's almost done. Come on. No, it is yet to be released. We are pre-doing videos, pre-making our videos. The the R and D guys are working on the patterns. Denny's getting them the instructions, and so it'll probably be at least another month, maybe two, before the patterns are out. Yeah, you would think, but she has she doesn't. Not a fan. Three, three more, Luna. Three, three more, station. Luna. She, I think she's better than she she's used to be. She's gotten better, but her first week that she was here, she was like, I don't work anymore. I don't want to be in this room. Okay, Luna. All over. You got some red leather? Oh, about 2,000 feet. How exciting. It's beautiful. Have I seen one before? Uh, I don't know. Wow, that is pretty. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Tony, haven't we sold a couple of rolls of that? You may have, but this is about 1,900 feet. Okay. So we'll make an item number. <laughs> and this was the black that I was talking about. I didn't realize it being as thin. Oh, but that's fantastic. Right? It's super nice. There's probably 20, 25, 24 size. What are we making, guys? We're making saddlebags. Saddlebags. All right. These are 10 by 12. Two billet square bottom saddlebags. It's only the very, shortest name. <laughs> very professional sounding. Though. Well, that's what we're professional. That's what we're aiming for. We try. Nice job. Nice job. We've already made 10 by 10 round bottom single billet bags. Kaz wants some of that red, so we've already sold a little bit. There you go. Oh, yeah. Those are beautiful. Those are beautiful. Mm -hmm. I, was, I was really excited about how well that python took the paint. And then this one, you have to move it around because there's a lot of shimmer in there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. That purple is metallic. Did you send any of those to Alex? 
Oh no, I should send him a. I'll send him a message. Yeah, I'll send him an email. That is, I did the first two Monday night, and then these I just did last night. So. Yeah, well, hey, if you're not happy, you come in here for a little while. You guys might open the door or something. <laughs> oh, wow, that red leather brought in a first-time chat. The doc. Say red leather, yellow leather three times fast. I think I did okay the one time, and we're going to leave it at that. <laughs> I didn't think of that Dr. Kavor game would still be around. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, you're going to have to entertain because I forgot to bring the buckles. Oh, Denny. Right, we'll be right back. It's going to be right back again. Ooh, Garrett, I bet those are going to be some cool inlays. That water snake is going to be great to work with because it's so thin. I really, um, it, it should be pretty similar when I did the inlay for that Royer knife last year and I did the video to like just really work it around so you got a really good pillow for your inlay. I have five dogs. And? One cat. And she only has three legs. <laughs> she's she's a special kitty. Yeah. That's right. She's got a red chair that she sits in in our backyard. And she likes to, I don't think she can get the bird. She's never, I don't think we've ever found a bird back there, even though they like to hang out with her. Which she's just good at hiding. Always. Place. Surprises me, but she does get a lizard and a snake every once in a while. Why is Luna the only one you bring in? Because she's the best one. The uh, like, like, like behavioral wise, I've got a husky, and he loves people. So, so the husky is way more. I mean, like she barks at everybody, which is a bit of an issue. Um, Miko loves everyone. Miko's been able. Yeah, Miko. I used to bring him in when he was just a pup. But I don't anymore. The problem with Miko is um, he's a little bit of a turd, and he likes to mark things. He is an unfixed male. And so he just really, plus, like, I can't trust him just to be off lead. Like, Luna, I always know that this girl is never going to leave my side. Like, a squirrel doesn't bother her. She is the best behaved dog I have ever, ever owned. She's never on a lead, ever, unless I'm walking her with my other dogs. She's the best dog ever. She's fantastic. She listens to me like nobody's business. It's the only thing that listens to me like nobody's business. In any case. I try. No, Denny does great. Uh, yeah, Miko is amazing, but he also wants to kiss you in the face and then pee on everything, which is not amazing. Um, and he also doesn't listen. He'll he'll just take off. He'll go wander. And he's just a big, he's a big dog. He's like 75, 80 pounds. Um, anyways, and then Wally is too big for that. He listens really well, but he wouldn't. He's like 90 pounds because he's a St. Bernard Great Pyrenees mix. So he just, he stays home. And then Molly's too old to do anything. And Blue is scared of everything. So he'd rather just sit in the sun on the floor and just shake because he's a Chewini and he doesn't know how to live life. Everything is too big. And he doesn't like hardwood floors. He doesn't like tile He's just, he's a pathetic little animal. He's very cute, but yeah, he's very sad. Somebody asking about the distressed mocha on Facebook, so I put the link on there for Austin. Perfect. My tongue is numb. Huh? That's weird. No. I think that's the amount of glue that was in this room. Oh. Yeah, absolutely play favorite. Luna is the best. She's, she's my girl. Just my girl right there. Is your cat named Tripod? No, her name is BB. Like like the bullet cuz she's she can run real fast for just three legs and then her butt scooches around cuz she's one of the legs in the back is missing and so she'll run she'll run real good and then if she needs to like turn a corner real fast drifting Yeah, she'll drift. Her back end drifts <laughs> around. It's fantastic. <laughs> Bye, Lena. Luna, this isn't nearly as loud as it could be. Huh. That seems to be adjusted. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Robert, what do you where where do you live? What do you 
you what are you up to this afternoon, Mr. Mr. Silent Robert? I just like, are you in the U.S.? Need, are you somewhere we, else? We need to come over and get even with you. Where do you live? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just curious what he's up to right now. You know, like he's he's got some fun comments coming through, and I'm just I'm a little curious where you're at. What are you doing? Is this just your everyday life? Oh, Peg is a cute name for a three-legged cat. That, that's pretty adorable. <laughs> yeah, BB got out one time. I think we we think that she escaped through the garage. And um Okay. And it was it was maybe four or five days before she came back home, um, and then ever since then she does not she is not an inside cat like she comes in and she sleeps at night, but otherwise like she is out in that chair, outside she hates being inside. You know, as a kid, my grandma and granddad had a pet coon. My uncle had found <gasps> a, my uncle had found a he had seen it a dead mother coon on the road and three little dead baby coons. Mm -hmm. but there was one live little baby coon. And he adopted it? So he picked it up and took it to my grandparents' house and built it a cage. His name was Jerry. We called him Jerry Coon. Mm -hmm. But uh, he lived with my grandparents for two or three years. But <clears throat> when he got older, you had to be careful how you put the food and water in the pen. You had to put the water in first and the food in second, because if you put the food in first and reached your hand in there with the water, he would want to take it off. <laughs> <laughs> but other than that, he was nice. I mean, you Hey, how about you don't do that? How about you're right? <laughs> I, I was thinking about old Jerry. <laughs> but uh, one time, he got out, and he, I thought, oh, I was feeding him, and I neglected him my duty and let him out mm -hmm. and uh, he climbed a tree and from that tree he went to another one and pretty soon he was off in the woods and I thought oh no I've lost Jerry Coon and my grandma said don't worry he'll be back and sure enough later that evening he came back but he was up in the tree mm -hmm. right above his cage and I said come on Jerry come on Jerry never would come down but my grandmother got a piece of bread and jelly and came out and down he came <laughs> All it takes is a PB but, and J. Yeah, but after that, he got out again at one time, and he was gone for two weeks, and we thought he was just gone. Yeah. But he came back, and he was all beat to heck. He'd been out in the woods and with other coons who were bigger and smarter than he was. And he never offered to get out again after that. Oh. He said, I'm going to live right here till I die. <laughs> and he did. <laughs> I've seen he said, the real world is not for me. <laughs> As opposed to what your cat thought the real world is, is for. Yeah. yeah, yeah. She she doesn't try to get out, like, the front door or anything. And I don't... We put up a little cat fence on the top of the fence so she can't get over the fence. Because um, at first we thought with just her three legs that she couldn't get over the fence. But she did. And so then we're like, okay, well, cat fence has to go in. So we did that. But she was only gone for one night that time, and then she came back. But Chris never, he had her before we got together, and he never had her declawed because she was missing that back leg. And he was like, well, I feel like it's mean to declaw a three-legged cat. <laughs> <That's> and, three, <laughs> three claws. <laughs> um, and so she's still, she's still good to go. She's a sweet thing, though. She likes to come in, and she'll nuzzle your head, and she'll love on you. And if I'm sitting on the couch, she'll come and sit in my lap and purr. Can't answer that question, but Andy, I don't know. He didn't do it. <coughs> Probably not. Luna is really hating me today. 
You're almost done. Actually, I've got some more. I could say it. What time is it? Yeah, like five. You're, I mean, she's probably more mad at me because I put the cart in front of the handle, so now she can't jump and scratch it. <laughs> <laughs> Now I've got two more, or yeah, two more parts. They're about this big around, about this thick. Oh, here they are. Here they are. But I didn't punch holes in them yet. Right, right. Uh oh. Hey. Yeah, I don't. I mean. We don't plan on getting any more cats, but I wouldn't declaw them if I had them. And she's real good. Sometimes she, I think she bites me more than she claws me. She likes to come up and like groom my hair from the back of the couch. And then she bites my head. <laughs> I know that it's loving, but sometimes it hurts. <laughs> I bite her. Yeah. All right, so, so far, we've got these panels. So these are the fronts oh. here. Thanks. Yeah, that's great. Got our, got our fronts there. Make sure whenever you set your, these are, what, three-quarter inch? Uh-huh, three-quarter right. three inch Three-quarter inch buckles. Make sure that the tongues are facing up because your straps will be coming down. If it goes the other way, it's not going to work. So make sure those tongues of your buckles are facing up when you set them. And then we will get our little lids put together and then the straps will come through. Got our straps here, double layer, real nice. And next week, I guess it'll be next Wednesday when we're back, right? Next Friday, because the oh, round I thought, table. I thought Friday, this Friday was, oh, it'll be next Friday is yes. trading cards. Okay, well, Friday, <laughs> I'll bring the machine in and we'll stitch up these billets and... Uh, We'll stitch our gussets on. We'll be good to go. And our lids on. And then we'll go home and celebrate. Yeehaw! <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, I've got to do this little job. Love it. Mr. Silent Robert is in Ontario, and he took his meds early today. <laughs> he took what? He took his meds early today. <laughs> That's good. Early is better than late. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Most times. Uh... Oh, yeah, Larry, the hair is real. Uh, my husband, Christopher, bought me a robot vacuum and mopper last year. It used to be a really big stress. I would We would come home from work, and I would immediately, like, Chris would kind of start making dinner, and I would vacuum everything because I couldn't handle it. So that I could like take my shoes off and not just be walking in just piles of hair. It's a lot. There's a lot of. It's not my favorite time of life right now. We only we had four dogs, and then our friend passed away, and we took his dog in because his family didn't want it, which is the big one. And and so now we have five dogs, and Wally sheds probably more than any of them with his Saint Bernard Great Pyrenees weird hair. I don't know. He's constantly, like, he's in a kennel, and it's just, like, white halo all the time around the kennel. Would you use a regular rivet on this? You could. I don't know. These are, the rivet and burrs are the most trustworthy. That's right. That's And that's what I like. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, no. So Chris bought me Mr. Vroom Vroom, and he, every morning at 6.30, he starts vacuuming, and then Splash Splash wakes up about halfway through Vroom Vroom's job and starts mopping. And I am much more sane than I used to be. So yours is automatic. It knows when to start mopping? Yeah, everything is. Wow. It's all online we have apps we run them splash splash has has a difficult time docking after he's done mopping and sometimes he gets he stuck gets, in the bathroom i've got a notification earlier that my vacuum got done nice vacuuming. yeah it vacuums after we leave 
Well, we I got my wife one a year or two ago for Christmas, and she named it Ruby, but it's not that smart. <laughs> it does it does dock itself though. Yeah. Showbot. Yeah. Uh, that's funny. My mother-in-law's is named Shamey. My Shamey. Her huge big bang fan. Um, this is just an odd lot oil tan striker. It's a, it's a buffalo. I'm pretty sure it looks like a water buffalo because you can see the hair cell in it. It's 15 square feet. It was a fifty dollars side. So yeah. it's just a. It is. It does have a crazy horse kind of finish. Absolutely. It's a little bit on the oily side with a nice pull up yeah. or just a nice distress. Crazy horse. I, I could see bomber jacket kind of look. Mm -hmm. It does. It's kind of got that dusty, dusty look to it. Well, so our, our vacuum, like it, the, the head vacuums, but then it has a base and then the base empties into a canister. And so we can go, it fills that up. Full, like that thing is a solid mass of hair. By the time it needs me to change the little the little baggie that goes in the canister, it can probably go almost a month before I change it out. So, which surprised me, but it packs it. It's got a good. It sounds like an airplane is like taking off when that thing docks and empties its bin into the canister. <laughs> Hey, Chevy. Now, what do you put in these little strap hangers? These are uh, billet, billet loops. And you put the back billet of your saddle through them oh, to keep right. your bags from flopping. It's the anti-flop loop. Yes, anti-flop loop. This is the anti-flop loop. You want to make sure to set these before you sew it, otherwise it's difficult. Yes. I hear. Yes. Yeah. You are correct. These rivets are really good, and they also take a lot longer to set than a double cap. But if you're preventing your things from flapping around, Luna. Then <laughs> yeah, these are traditional horse tack rivets. Striker has the same vacuum. He says it really does sound like a jet taking off. It does. It absolutely does. But it only lasts for like five seconds, so it's it's bearable. It really has saved my my mental. It's it's, it's necessary. I love all of my animals, but the two the. Molly, she's an old lab mix. She's that orange dog that everybody has. That's what I like to call her. And uh, then Blue, our little Chewini. They're both about 14 years old. Wow, that's and, old for a dog. Yeah, they're, they're, she's, her getting around isn't great. Hey, Luna, what are you doing? But she still gets excited about food. And she hops through. Her back legs are pretty weak at this point. They kind of hop together. <laughs> I know you talked a little bit about rivets and burrs. Um, somebody was asking if there was a good rounder. You mean a, a domer? Yeah, a domer. Uh, we don't sell one. Uh, I think Weaver does. Is it Weaver? I think Weaver we, might. They uh, do. Uh... Gosh, I can't think. There's another guy that sells a lot of. Oh, there's a there's a dude. He's at the show. Like if you're, oh, our battery died. Um, if you are 
at, at one of the leather shows, there's somebody that's usually set up there that has some domers. I think Johnson, Chevy. Johnson. Bruce Johnson. Yeah. yeah. I think they're like 90 bucks for a set, if I'm not mistaken. Because the steel has to be really hard in order yeah. to round that. Um, yeah, this is an antique, and you can see it used to have little lines on it. It would leave a little impression. Yeah. Oh. Go up to the camera. This one. That's a deep. Yeah. Actually. But that's been used. I mean, that tool is probably 100 years old. Yeah. Then he had a new new input on it because he barreled out that end. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, I mean, that's probably like a half inch down in there. Yeah. But you can put a pretty good dome on them. Yeah. Bruce Johnson, yeah, he sells he sells them, and and I think Weaver does too now. Yeah, I'm Look, not sure. A I don't think Tandy's has them yet. No, I don't think so. And I think our we've got a company that's working on them, but once again, they have to get the steel to the right hardness. Oh, Denny, don't throw that away. What did I do? Oh, <laughs> I didn't want to throw that away. All right, so are we are we set? You We're to... set until Wednesday. Perfect. Friday. Friday, yeah. This is Wednesday, isn't it? It is Wednesday. It's just Monday Wednesday. to me. It's Monday to me. That's right. So if Wednesday is Friday to me. Friday we should be here with trading cards because it is the last Friday of the month. Next Friday is the first. And then next Wednesday will be our roundtable discussion, most likely talking about some rocks because we just got back from Tucson and we have some. So maybe Kevin will come show us his favorite finds in Tucson. Um, all right. Thanks for joining us, and we'll be back next Friday to finish this. Yes. All right, Denny, what are you going to do? So. Oh, no, I mean in the meantime. This the coming, week. this coming, I don't know. <laughs> this coming Friday mm -hmm. then is trading card. Correct. And next Wednesday. You're off. I'm off. Oh, because the round table. Oh, okay. Cool. What am I going to do? I'll figure out something. Alrighty, folks. Uh, we have a after party special. You can see what our live shopping for this week is going to be. Um, we've got some fun, cool stuff. We've got the color veg, um, and we've got three sides of each of those. So if you're curious to see what we'll be selling tomorrow, tomorrow, jump over to Twitch or stick around on Twitch, and we'll be showing off the leathers for tomorrow's live shopping. You guys have a great afternoon, and we will see you on Friday. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.